Tinubu in his Democracy Day speech says those who cannot accept defeat do not deserve the joy of victory. And tonight we discuss education financing as a tool in nation building. This is Plus Politics. I am Messi Eboko. President Bola Tinubu on Monday said those who cannot endure and accept the pain of defeat in elections do not deserve the joy of victory when it's their turn to triumph. Tinubu said these in an address to Nigerians while commemorating this year's Democracy Day. Now, Tinubu defeated Atiku Abubakar, Peter Obi of the People's Democratic Party and Labour Party, respectively. Many have understood the statement to be directed towards those who he defeated in the last election. Well, joining us to discuss this is Benga Olu Olorukwami, a public relations consultant and APC member. And also we have Ambassador Ugaga Ogene, Ogene Oyole, who is a member of the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank Thanks you. For Thank me. you for having me here. All right, then uh, let me start with you, Ugaga Ogene. I'd like you to... Let's, you know, for the sake of a recap, or more like uh, rephrasing that, let's quickly look at, you know, the thoughts. This particular quote was part of the speech of the president. He said, the beauty of democracy is that those who win today can lose tomorrow, and those who lose today can win tomorrow. And those who cannot endure and accept the pains of defeating an election today do not deserve the joy of victory tomorrow. How would you describe this quote or part of the speech by the president in comparison to the 2023 elections? Okay, thank you very much. So I would like to quickly say that coming from a president, I it's kind of, it came with misfeeling because I think there should be a level of balance. And why what he's saying is not so bad, why what he has said is not uh, so out of place, I think as a president, he should be more interested in conversations or statements that will unite us as a people. But for me, I think that, yes, why we need our democracy to grow, judiciary uh, is part of the, the process that deepens our democracy. Because if some persons feel that they are rigged out or that they were taken advantage of, they have every right to... Uh, to approach the court. That does not mean that they don't have the courage or strength to accept defeat. It's just to test the, you test the law, you test uh, the law. A lot of people feel that they, they were robbed or they are not robbed. It is now for the law to decide. Where you can begin to make this statement is probably when the law have, uh, made, uh, have a position, the court has a position on an issue, and you go on to say you want to form a parallel government or that. It's not out of place in a democracy. That is what I actually think. And I think the president should now focus on governance and begin to talk as a president of Nigeria and not a candidate of a political party. Mm. All right, uh, Benga, some people believe that the last part of his speech or quotation was totally unnecessary, especially looking at our political climate. And I know that you're an APC member, but how would you describe, you know, the speech of the president? So I think it's a bit um, disingenuous to look at just a section of what I consider one of the best speeches that I've heard um, delivered by anybody in the last few years on our political journey. Um, it was a speech that was designed to take Nigerians back to understand exactly how precious this democracy that we have is. He took us on the, on the memory lane, the issues that had to do with um, the aborted 1993 election uh, that brought in uh, the, uh, that should have brought in uh, Moshida Abiola as president of this country. He mentioned that, look, this democracy cost Nigerians blood. It cost Nigeria sweat, and that we should we should we should take it uh, more seriously than we do because I think there is a generation of people who don't understand exactly how much the democracy costs. So um, it was a message not only to Nigerians of that era, but younger Nigerians who don't even know what this democracy costs. So uh, and that part where he was talking about um, people 
pulled on, pulled on this, uh, where he mentioned what you said. I think that if you look at that part in isolation, then you miss the entire effort of that speech. Because in there, that speech was also the place where he said that when you don't agree with the result of an election or the process, there is provision for you to go to court and to seek redress. You know, uh, so it was a complete speech, and it's like when you the, you want to look at a, 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 an entire meal of fish, and you take away the tail, and say, "Oh, this fish is," and it doesn't take taste nice because you only had the the the, the flame of the fish, and then you take that as as uh, you know as something of the whole. So, uh, mentioning just that part will not do justice to that speech. That speech was a complete one. It took us back into memory lane showed us exactly what we can do if we get democracy right and put us uh, in the picture for the future. So I think that looking at that portion of the speech alone will be disingenuous. Uh, and I think we should look at the entire speech in totality. Okay, uh, so, so we still have Ogene. Ogene, some people, like I rightly mentioned, believe that you know that part of the speech was totally unnecessary, especially when you look at our political climate where you have uh, those who actually contested for the elections, especially the presidential elections and other elections, still you know in court. And then you know that statement is being made. Uh, do you agree with them that you know that that speech is or was unnecessary, or the particular part of that speech was unnecessary. Like I said earlier, the president is no longer a, a candidate of a political party. We are, he inherited a, a nation that is badly divided, uh, politically, uh, 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 religiously, and also on ethnic lines. And so the president should be wary of some kind of statements. You, we still have that election. The Nigerian citizenry has been contesting that outcome of that election. A lot of people feel it was massively rigged in the favor of the sitting president. Why I feel that uh, everybody should approach the court or do uh, seek redress, uh, redress rightly, the president should focus on statements that will unite us, on statements that will not infuriate the people, on statements that will not make the people feel like they are stupid. This is not the first time he's making that kind of statement. During his acceptance speech, he said, uh, you know, that some people are not happy now that he, he, he stands where they are can't. <laughs> We have uh, Ogaga can I connect with us, but we still have uh, Mr. Benga. Benga, if you can hear me. So. Very clearly. Do you think that if it were the reverse, because a lot of people are also saying that if the case was a different case entirely, let's assume that he was on the other side of the divide where he had to go to court, do you think he would have accepted the outcome? Again, I, I, think what we're, I think what we're doing is we're trying to um, force a conversation where I, I don't think there's a conversation to be had. This is the president who, from day one, has reached out to the other side. I dare say that this man has met as many opposition leaders as uh, he's met members of his party since he became president. Every speech he has made has been one of the unit. I even saw a video of a member of the Labour Party, a then uh, House of Representatives elect, saying that he didn't know exactly how smart this man, he didn't know how smart this man was until he met him. And that it appealed to him. sense of empathy and so here we are um, trying to force a conversation about the portion of the speech when we should look at the entirety of the speech and the entirety of his, uh, of his domino and how he has carried on things in one direction, since he was sworn in. This is a man who I believe is very prepared for uh, the job. He signed three groundbreaking laws. In, uh, bills into law since he got into office, and all these laws are not targeted at a particular party, they are targeted at all Nigerians. So, if again you want to take a portion of the speech that is 
easy to misunderstand if you have tried to be mischievous. That's fine. But I know that for a fact that Nigerians are saying that, okay, we probably didn't know where this man was. Uh, where we didn't probably understand this man in the beginning. But now there are many Nigerians coming to say, you know what, I think we got it right. I think we picked a person who is prepared, who understands the system, who understands where the true pinch is every Nigerian. And he has, from day one, been attacking these issues front and center. Many Nigerians support some of the things he has done. I mean, uh, one of the most popular things he's done is the issue with the CBN governor, and he has broad support for that because Nigerians know exactly how much pain they were in when this man ran the show. So, uh, again, if we want to be uh, to be nitpicking, that picking that's fine. But again, Nigerians should look out and look at the entire picture and see that in. President Bola Ahmed Tinoku is somebody who is prepared for the job, who has said repeatedly that don't pity me, who is ready, who is risking it all to say, look, don't pity me because I asked for this job and I will deliver. He was talking to some people who said, we might not be able to get it a hundred percent, but guess what? We cannot go below 90 percent. And there's the manifesto there for everybody to refer to at every point. Everything he has done has come from the manifesto that he presented. So, for me, I think that uh, he delivered a wonderful speech, and whoever wants to pick at a, a paragraph. Of well, it, well, I think that I, I think that you have uh, uh, Benga. I think that you have said this a couple of times, but it would also be important, you know, to know that that's not the essence. This conversation is not about. Uh, trying to criticize the speech of the president or, you know, look, look for fault. But we're looking at it in a holistic manner. And we're saying that it, it actually happened on democracy. And we understand the fact that, yes, at some point, uh, you know, in 2018, the president had declared that June 12 become the election uh, democracy day as to May 29. And that's very different. And we also understood what happened 1993, the MKO Abiola election, which some people think it was the most credible election so far in the history of Nigeria. And we can also not, you know, yes, yes we, we can also not, you know, forget that. And, and so it, it's very important that the statement that the president made, let's not forget that he's the president now. And we can also, we haven't recovered from, you know, the previous statement that was made that has, you know, put the country, you remember, you know what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. Subsidies gone and everywhere went, you know, um, almost crazy. So, but again, that's why we're talking about this because the speech of the president is very important. And all that he has said, if you look at it down. In words and in action. So, so, in words and in action. This man has demonstrated over and over. But, but, but I, I, I'd like to take you on. I, I'd like to take you on Be, before because we're talking about you know the we're talking about democracy now. We're talking about the elections. He's talked about defeat and those who have failed or who have been defeated. And we know how uh, up until this moment you have uh, people in court, you know, at the tribunal. Again. One of the tenets of democracy is that you have an independent judiciary. You have a transparent electoral process. So I bring it back to you again. Do you think that, uh, that you know, those parties that are involved have a right to go to court, you know, to uh, approach the court and say, hey, we think that this election was not fair, was not free. The, judia, the, the body saddled with the responsibility of, of conducting the election was not credible enough. Do you think that they should accept defeat? Do you think that they should pack their bags and baggages and walk away from this, contesting the election? No. Look, again, we can't take these things in isolation, right? President Butler Ahmed Tinubu was the first person who, started, who pushed for forensic um, evidence in the case of AKT election, where... Uh, uh, we believed, he believed at the time that his uh, friend, uh, Fayemi of a state, was cheated out of an election. And they went to court and they won. This same man helped to ensure that Ondo retrieved his mandate, or Shun retrieved his mandate. Um, uh, and and that, has been his, that has been his way of doing things. He understands that courts are important. I believe what he was saying is that after you have gone to court and the courts have declared one way or the other, if you still insist 
that you are you are, you are not accepting of the judgment or of the standing at the time yes that's those were those he was referring to he wasn't saying that oh don't go to court he is a beneficiary of many court judgments so why would he say that he shouldn't go to court so that's that i think that's that where i think we're getting it wrong he has never said that don't go to court even in his speech in this same speech we are discussing he did say that the courts are there for redress so but, but he doesn't he there, doesn't necessarily have to say that they shouldn't go to court okay, when you say they should accept that when answer, you talk about you accepting the fee that i would like to uh, a few questions that i would like to ask based on what he, he has said the question is if you say he was saying it based on the fact that if courts have decided that people and people are still insisting have court decided we are in the tribunal has anybody gone to block the roads or anybody is anybody shooting gun anywhere that he should not perform his duties? He has been inaugurated. Are we still in court? Yes. Why don't so that? Though, why wouldn't he allow today, the protest to go to the speech that he gave? After no, you can't. You, can, you have been talking about talking. And, you have been talking about and, taking, and a, and a, and a, taking a taking a portion of the speech and leaving the whole. You can also to, also not speech, take the whole and leave a portion. Every portion, every paragraph take that speech. Every paragraph take that speech. And we are saying is the president. He should begin to act like a president and not like a party man. He shouldn't be acting like we are still in a contest. He has a country. The president has a country to govern. He has people to manage. He first, you cannot make progress if you don't have people. And then we are in court. People are in court seeking redress. And you are making statements about people who cannot accept defeat. Accepting defeat comes with conviction. Are the people convinced that they lost? They are in court. If they don't believe in the court, if they don't believe in the Nigeria, they don't believe in democracy, if they don't want to accept the they will approach the court. Lawyers to go there and defend his mandate. Yeah, so, so I think that we, we, we need to have like a smooth conversation here. And the court bill he signed had to do with the judiciary. And he mentioned that, look, the reforms are only just started because he doesn't want these issues where courts are giving judgments that are tr that is truncating democracy. So really, they, again, I think we are nitpicking here. The man has led from the front from the very first day, and he has said it in that same speech that look, you when you don't feel if you, when you feel cheated or you feel aggrieved, go to court. I, I think we, we, we I let's share the thoughts of Ogene now. Ogene, Menga, we'll come back to you quickly you, as we close this conversation moment. down. Uh, let's take just the, take the a man, breather and and allow um, Ogene come in. Uh, Ugaga Ogene. Can you hear me? So what do you think this means for those, you know, who are in court in the tribunal, the, the president in his speech? He really didn't have to say directly that you shouldn't go to court, but he's saying, urging, speaking in parables. And of course, uh, you understand what that means. So what does this mean for those parties that are already in court or those people who are challenging the outcome of the 2023 elections? I think the president has been acting like a principal who is trying to whip his students into shape. You can't, you, you first, he should show respect to his, the people who contested with him. He shouldn't look like those people does not have the right to contest in the first place or to contest the outcome of the election. We are all, we all have evidences. Everybody, no Nigerian can come out and say, oh, we are completely satisfied with the process of elections. And people are in court. As a president, you should allow the process run. Let it not look like you are bullying everybody, even in the, even the court, to, to have it your way. You should, as a president, as a statement, if you had come out to say, oh, my colleagues are already, the people who contested with me are already in court. Please let us allow the process and be peaceful, and allow the uh, courts to determine uh, the facts in this issue and make their verdict. And until then, I'm going to uh, encourage my, uh, uh, my uh, opponents to join us in the building of Nigeria. That would, that would have been a better statement to make as a president. Not that you are saying those, you are beginning to make it look like a mockery, uh, those who does not believe in... Uh, we have not gotten to a point where we can now say people have refused to accept defeat or not. Elections take processes. We have the pre-election issues. We have the uh, elections proper. And we have the post-election issues. You election can the election circle can completely co uh, draw to a close when all issues have been uh, surrounding the election have been resolved, and we are still in the process of resolving this issue. The question is, are they going about it legally? Yes, they have approached the tribunal. The case is ongoing. Are you going to now prejudice the court? No. The, the right thing to do is to allow the process the process run. Every day you come out and you look like you want to whip 
other uh, aspirants into uh, other uh, people who contested against you. Into you this for it, 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 no, please. When you were talking, uh, excuse me. Let, can we have can we have a conversation? You can't be repeating about one paragraph. Only one statement from the president is enough. Well, oh, gentlemen, we have to go now. A blade. Don't forget that it was just one statement that we made to Kuwait to rise to 500 and something naira. Just one statement in the inauguration oh, wow. that put so us. Benga, we have level. to go, gentlemen. We, we at this I point we have to. No, I am not. We have, have to go, gentlemen. Go Thank you so much for being part of the show. Part, I, as a matter of fact, I support the removal of subsidy, but I want to also let you know that it was Benga, only one paragraph of his speech that me. he made we have to go now. on subsidy. And and because his word carry power as president, Uga, go, get we have to go. Gentlemen, thank you so much. At this point, we'll probably have this conversation some other time. Thank you very much. But of course, uh, democracy, Nigeria belongs to all of us, and we must ensure that, you know, the country becomes a country that we're proud of. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Benga or Loro Kwame, uh, public relations consultant, a member of the APC, and Ambassador Ugaga Ogene Ogene Yoli. Thank you so much, a member of the PDP as well, for being part of the show. We'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be discussing education financing in Nigeria. Please stay with us.